Welcome to Ambient Discourses, conversations with musicians and composers who create musical experiences and sonic landscapes. My guest on the program is Greg from the Ambient Project Sonora, and it was a memorable one that wove through very fascinating topics. We explored the nostalgia of tape loops, talked about his latest album, Numina, waded in the pools of existentialism and other golden conversational nuggets for the contemplative artist. But before we get on with the interview, I want to ask for your patience and for your help. I ask for your patience with the audio because there were two times during the interview that my external audio unit basically shut down on me. (laughs) Uncomfortable laughter. And it made editing this interview quite a challenge. You'll notice at some point that there starts to become a little bit of a delay introduced, a little bit of an echo. And also the interview just abruptly ends. I lost some of the audio from the very, from the tail end of the interview, probably about 10 minutes worth or so. Nonetheless, I ask for your patience. The other end is I ask for your help and your support. This part makes me feel entirely uncomfortable because I don't like asking for money and even more so asking for help. But I'm using a an entry level Mac Mini for doing all of my music production, all of the video production, and it barely does the job. But it was a particularly struggling during the interview, and I don't know how much longer I can sustain this, so I ask for your help. Please become a supporter over at stolas.com slash support. If you can't give or don't want to give, you don't have the means to give, that's fine. I, You are the wrong audience. I'm not asking you for help. But if you do have some extra money on hand or you're able to help or support the program, I would appreciate it. And now I present to you my interview with Sonora. Greg, it's wonderful to have you on the podcast uh, of the Project Sonora. Welcome. Welcome to the program. It's great to have you here. Oh, thanks for having me. So before we dive into your music, I, I, you're new to me. I've I've just uh, encountered you uh, through perceptual tapes, uh, mm-hmm. through Tim Allen's work there, and it's I'm I started listening to your music, and I just endlessly fascinated. I wonder if you. But before we get into that, I'd love to get to know you more. Uh, tell me about like where you're from, which some of your musical history that's brought you up to this point. Sure. Um, so I've always made music. Um, <laughs> always been creative, at least. Um, and yeah, I picked up guitar around 13. Um, before that, twiddle around with a little Casio. I don't know if you know the, the VL tone, the little the white uh, guy from the eighties um, mm-hmm. that makes very bleepy noises. Um, and just messed around. Um, but yeah, guitar was the first sort of proper instrument I got into. Got into bands, learned to record for, at the same time that I started to learn how to play music, how to make music. So that they've those two things have always been together for me. Um, and at some point around sort of the early 2000s um um, a bunch of friends sort of formed a a kind of arts music collective um where we we just we started to put on gigs locally um that were a bit different because there was there was a run of um you know very standard gigs and we and there was some of those friends were at art school and and brought in this wonderful kind of art art school approach to it all and uh we just we wanted to put on uh, a bit more of a party you know a bit more of an event for people to get into rather than just watch the band and very people were quite very judgmental in that area as well and mm. it's just seemed very i don't know very chin strokey very uh, arms folded and you know entertain me yeah. kind of thing and so that was that was amazing we had murals on the wall like sorry 
pieces of paper on the wall that people could join in and make murals of during the night. We had, you know, performance art. We had just all this other kind of other media happening. Yeah. And that's that's where Sonora started um, out of that kind of experimental collective. Um, we were, um, I wasn't doing this so much, but I was very inspired by my friends there who were just making up bands for just one gig, you know, just off, off a weird concept. Um, <laughs> and then maybe just play that one gig and that'll be it. Um, oh and it was, <laughs> it was lovely um, to, to really, uh, it was a really good antithesis, I guess, to the, the kind of band world that I'd been used to before that, where you'd, you'd work really, really hard to construct and craft songs. Mm -hmm. um, and here it was just like, oh, I've got this mad concept. Let's let's make a band for the night and we'll perform for half an hour this, you know, around this this idea. And I just, that's just still inspires me now. Like, um, I think amazing. that goes to all my music. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Um, I, I, I've started to hear little pieces of that sort of thing from other musicians too, where they've been doing a little bit more avant-garde kind of, kind of public performances or concepts um in fact um i think it was sherry finzer was talking about um one concert that she per well, it wasn't it was a kind of a performance piece i guess that that she was a part of where everyone wrote a story of what the music was so that was the the whole context you you show up they this music is happening live but you write a perf you write your own reflection of this performance and it could be story it could be prose so this is really interesting <laughs> cool yeah there was one of the things we had actually was a uh, i don't what's the name of the story is it uh it slips my mind but um sorry the game rather you you write a line and then someone writes the next line or the oh. drawing version is i think consequences where you draw ahead with a fold on a folded piece of paper and then you fold it over the next person draws like the neck or the chest and mm -hmm. so on um d and you know just silly stuff like that it was really really nice to just go look art is fun <laughs> it's not this kind of you know very serious thing yeah. it's for everybody to get involved in and that that's definitely something that stuck with me um yeah and so, so just to go back to the kind of rough story like i've been back into bands and still playing bands but sonora has always been like a, a kind of an in-between project for me you know it's, it's very much a solo thing um on my own just just free really really free exploration of sound um and i thought i don't know it I kind of left it for a long time and then like many many musicians the you know during the lockdowns we found ourselves not able to go and do things like band practice or go to watch bands live and so on and um still need to make music i can't not make music mm, so yeah. i found myself coming straight back to sonora and 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 sort of re-exploring that world and um and it's kind of it's taken on a new uh i don't know a new place a new meaning in my life really yeah. you know, it's it's really really important now um I never, I never thought it would be at the forefront, you know. I thought it was always just kind of a bit of a play thing, and um, yeah, right now I'm just, I'm loving it. I'm, I'm living in it, you know. Mm -hmm. What was um, the experience for, like for you during lockdown when you were creating? Was it, was it just uh, kind of a free form, just continuation of the exploration, or did it kind of start to take on kind of meditative qualities for you, or, or, or what was that like? Yeah, it was it was a transitional time i think like you know musically and for everyone i guess as we were well in fact <laughs> I, f I felt like it was a very much a limbo time um, yeah. um so i saw you know there was one one band that i was in um it kind of petered out we tried to uh uh what's the word uh, collaborate remotely and it, it just did, didn't really work you know some things you just have to be in a room mm -hmm. for um we were exploring more electronic things and so that that was i think that's one of the things that opened me up into like oh, actually you know what? i really i really enjoy making more kind of electronic sample based things and and so i at first i i, I made an album accidentally that was quite electronic um and all door based um and it was it was really moody and you're know, obviously loads of um, anxiety and emotion that came out of being in lockdown and the whole situation um and that so i got that out of my system and then um i don't know why for some reason i i i got back to instagram which i've never kind of quite gelled with um 
and then discovered that there was a really nice community on there and that really helped me to uh, kind of affirmed where I was what I was doing I guess uh, you know again a lot of people were doing the same thing found found themselves at home isolated from collaborating in person and making you know weird electronic or experimental things in their in their houses and and there was loads of it and it was really inspiring mm. um, so yeah that led me to to get my four track tape recorder out again for one um, <laughs> Uh, which is one of the things I had I was using back in the early noughties. Uh, I don't like that word, 2000, whatever. Um, and just explore tapes again and the kind of ephemeral nature of, you know, I... I sorry if I dart back and forth. My brain's a bit... No, no this, is, this is good. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I mentioned I've always been, a re you know, recording and I've worked worked in the, as a recording engineer for, you know, 20-odd years. And so I'd, I'd also had to sort of learn how to record with software and get into that whole world so another thing i found during lockdown actually was you know what i can have a break from this right now and the four tracks and the cassettes was uh, were a, such a such an amazing uh, eye opener for me to to you know be hands on again um, mm -hmm. and to play with ideas that could just get erased and go go wonky and warbly and you know not 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 worry too much about it being perfect and um yeah just get out of the computer really and and just play with real stuff um it's been incredible uh yeah yeah i've <laughs> noticed uh quite a resurgence or I, I guess resurgence is probably the wrong word but a surge of interest in using old cassette recorders and i've even seen one artist who his whole thing was tape loops but he had a series of walkmans and that's it and it was like triggering different walkmans at different points and it, yep. it, working with volume and all that and it's it's really interesting can you for the it. listener who might not be um uh, aware of what tape loops are. Could you talk a little bit about that and sure. what, and how you hand uh, how you landed upon it and what it's kind of like for you in that process? Um, yeah, tape loops were always one of those things I'd I'd heard about and never got around to trying. And like many of the weird things I ended up doing in lockdown, like I learned I learned to to whittle a fence. I learned to make ginger beer. It's really random stuff. Yes. <laughs> um, and I made I made tape loops. Um, so at some point, I think it was off, off Instagram or YouTube, I found, you know, so, uh, someone explaining how to do it. And I thought, oh, I'm going to give that a try. Um, and so basically what it is, is so you have a cassette and you take it apart. Um, I'm already loving this. Um, <laughs> I love taking things apart. And you, 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 you chop out a piece of tape, basically. Um, there are various ideas on how long, how long they should be. But you kind of just make, make it, uh, let's see. It's, it's literally a loop of tape that goes in this cassette. So you're, so you're getting rid of the big spool of of the whole side and just using enough for, it's about a few seconds, They roughly sort of five to 10 seconds or so. And um, uh, yeah, and it's it's a loop, so you can record on it. And so, what? well, firstly, you can record a loop on there um, and that's that's amazing in itself because you're just getting a, a live sample and a very rough lo-fi sample of whatever you're giving it. Um, the next thing you can do is is get rid of the erase head or or tape over a bit um, in your in your recorder so that you get um, you can record again on that loop. So you can build up another layer as it goes round again. Um, and this is amazing. So you can you, you can either add a, add another you know react to what's on there already mm -hmm. or you can record the same thing again that's a really nice effect because it starts to blur because it's out of time and it you know it blurs the edges and gets really soft and dreamy yeah. um you know oh my god and i just i can't i can't <laughs> infuse enough about how amazing they are because again going back to the the kind of you know the antithesis of working digitally in the door all the time um here here we have something just so so ephemeral like the idea that you'd put down first on the tape loop to get recorded over again and get disappeared forever um mm -hmm. and you know just become you can watch it in front of your eyes just or listen to this thing happening you yeah. know and you're you're kind of 
it's it's it just made me think about art so much because it's you're 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 kind of handing over the responsibility or maybe that's not the right word but i find a lot of a lot of things that really trouble us as creative people is um sort of thinking about the process getting through a project and and definitely finishing a project and here you can you can just chuck your ideas in and it, and you collaborate with the tape um and this it takes all that pressure away from like you know thinking about how am i going to craft this song it's just it happens it's like collaborating with a person mm. and i guess going back to the lockdowns that was what really you know kept me enthralled about it, it was like oh wow i've got a collaborator here i'm just let's feed it this let's mm -hmm. let's try this and see what happens yeah. and every time it comes back with you can't ever imagine what it's going to do <laughs> it's amazing yeah it's that's I'm, I'm just really fascinated by this and it there's a lot of there's this ephemeral quality about it where it's uh, it's intangible but yet it's also has this finite lifespan and it's like all mm. about the moment and it's not about as exactly. much creating this polished final product it's really about being in the moment with the tape and what you're feeding mm -hmm. it and what what it's regurgitating back and responding that's exactly and you mentioned earlier that you know uh or you asked about it, uh, the kind of med meditative qualities of it i think the process of that is really meditative to me it's definitely mm -hmm. therapeutic in mm -hmm. terms of you know it like we all like to get into the zone or the the flow of a thing right and mm -hmm. and that, that whole process in itself is 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 that it's it's exactly that you know you especially if you're not recording this on on any other you know i don't know recorder of, of any sort you're just there with the tape right. and it's a bit like um painting to me where you well what i end up doing quite a lot with painting is i'll you know i'll have a color in mind and i'll throw that in and then I'll, I'll react to that and put something on top and build and build and build. And then it gets to a point, just like the tape loop, where it starts to now degrade because you've just ruined the idea that was there before at the beginning. And now you're somewhere else. Um, and it just, it, it's just evolving in front of you. And I, I, yeah, I love it. Let's check out a track from the brand new album from Sonora. It's called Numina. And this track is entitled Flaking Data here on Ambient Discourses. Help me keep ambient discourses ad-free. Become, Become a supporter, supporter today, today with your, with your monthly, monthly contribution, contribution at stolas.com slash support. support. Supporters, Supporters get free, free music, music downloads, downloads delivered, delivered right, right to your, to your email. email. Become a Become monthly, monthly supporter, supporter today, today at stolas.com slash support. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I really have a fond appreciation for this because it's because it has nothing to do with the uh, treating music like a commodity or 
um, that it's you're not just out there for getting likes and views and whatnot, but that it's mm-hmm. really deeply about um, connecting with the art form of music, the act of creating, and treating it like a living entity. And mm. and it's I think it has this this quality about it that we resonate with it differently than we do say something we just throw up on a Apple Music or Spotify and just listen to as a consumer. But this is this is entirely different to me, and I love it. It's just fascinating, and it seems pure. <laughs> you know, do you know what I mean? I do know. Yeah, yeah. It's very wholesome. Uh, it's, it's, I, I, well, I think I know what you mean. Um, it's, it's, it's just really soul enriching, I think, yeah. in, in a way that working on a computer or, or just digitally in general really, really cannot be. I don't think it ever will be. Um, it's the same as, well, for me at least, uh, maybe this is a generation thing, but writing by hand versus texting or typing on a computer. There's just something different that happens in the way you process information or perhaps you don't process but you know it, it just i don't know how to describe that it is it is feeling. i think there's a lot more going on all at once in your brain like when you're writing i write every day i with pencil and i have my my sharpener and i've got it all right <laughs> right here and i i'm even one of the unorthodox people that will actually write in my books so like my Dao, my Dao de ching book is is scribbled oh all over you know <laughs> i'm writing notes and i'm writing reflections so that the next time i come back around and go oh i yeah. was in a different spot that meant back then oh, and oh, wow. you know yeah, so you yeah. get you get these reflections of of you know moments in time of what you were thinking or experiencing back then but then you, you go back and you're like well that's great but i'm going to write another reflection in here <laughs> so <laughs> my my books are a mess and i'm i'm sure some authors would be in absolute just horror why are you writing but <laughs> but at the same time it's this it's interacting intent intentionally and and mm-hmm. intently Yep. with um with the books that you're reading or with the music that you're listening to so the, and and i think that there's um and i'm sure that i'm almost certain about this that, that there's statistics or s- scientific uh, findings to back this that the increased brain activity the n- increased neural activity of the act of writing the act of working with physical objects in combination with what we see and what we're thinking about and processing. So, yeah, I, I can see how that translates in your tape, um, working with tape loops, working with physical medium. You, you have that tactile quality of working with these, with, the, with mm. the knobs and the buttons and the physicality of it as opposed to click, click, click. Like. Yeah, <laughs> which is so disconnected, isn't it? It's like yes. you're you, you're clicking things and you know they're happening, but it's it's like, is it really happening? I find you know the same thing with mixers. Being, being an engineer, it's it's like I can see it's doing the thing, but I can't. It doesn't feel like it's doing the thing. Mm-hmm. And I think to take it back to art again, the what, all this stuff we're talking about here is, it's, to me at least, it's about collaborating, and um, that goes for the you know the listener at any point in the process. Mm-hmm. And, I'm, and I'm the first listener, I feel like, because I'm I'm hearing this thing happen. Yeah. And I think in any art uh, project, if you like, um, in any art piece, if you can invite the listener in, I, I feel like that's kind of the goal, really, or the you know such a such a crucial part of it. Mm-hmm. Then you you. Yeah, Sorry, my words get stuck sometimes. You just so here. invested <laughs> in it, you know. Like, um, yeah. for instance, I, I I stumbled across this short story writer recently um, who does that in a in a short stories, and it's amazing that she just gives enough information for you to um, read beyond the lines, I guess. You know, to fill mm-hmm. in the gaps, and by doing that, you become a writer i think you know you become part of the art piece um i don't think that's just it just goes so much deeper than here's a song listen to the song you know do you like it 
Mm-hmm. It's, that's just seems so flat to me. And I think it, as much as you can, you know, the more you can invite the listener in, the better. Um, yeah, 100%. I, feel, feel like, I just feel like that's what it's about. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it's, I think that's it's kind it, of, um, that's, I think that's why ambient music, at least for me, ambient and atmospheric, the that whole spectrum of the electronic music genre, that I, th- I think that's why the allure is so um, palpable and just attractive because there is space for you to listen. And even mm. on a sonic level, space for the environment that you're in to mm-hmm. also interact with the music. Like I've had times when I'm walking my dog or whatever and listening that's so that's that's my sacred listening spaces i go for these long walks and i just listen very intently to an album and sometimes the the world around me kind of bleeds into the headphones and sometimes i've had experiences where it's like wait was that the album or was that me <laughs> yeah you yeah. know and and in a way it it creates addition like a new experience a new artistic expression in that moment that you'll never have again yeah yeah and it's such a precious and beautiful thing i think when when you have that space to interact with your mind or interact with the environment and that's mm. for me why i just i love that this whole genre it's so deep so wide in types of expressions the way that people create is vastly different from one another and Mm -hmm. so many possibilities and and invites you in as the listener to dream up your own world and yeah yeah Yeah, exactly yeah yeah I, I, i guess especially in ambient music because there's no there's no vocal there's no like kind of uh storyteller as such mm-hmm. you know telling you what, what to infer from what you're hearing you're just sort of given the i don't know canvas isn't the word but you're you're given yeah. some ideas and and you can yeah what you put in there is 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 entirely yours right yeah yeah Let's talk about uh, some of your works. You've got a new album, I believe, out called Numina. Um, yes. Tell me a little bit about that album and um, and what went into it and some of the things that you were kind of maybe processing at the time or experimenting with. Sure. Um, so it's, it's kind of around kind of based around the themes of uh, memory and perception and you know, how they can be skewed and it's very much like uh, an unreliable n- narrator in a story you know um mm-hmm. i've had a, what led me to it was I, I, you know i've had various incidents in my life um where you know i've, I've I'd suffered mental health issues a lot um been working on that for a long 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 time and you know just one one last thing kind of was the last straw as, as such um, that just made me think, oh my God, what is, what's going on here? And it ma- it led me to look into, um, we'll look into all of it. So, you know, yeah. an, an incident happened. It wasn't as I recalled and I, and, and there was another witness there. Um, and it was, it was about my dog. Like just, it's, it's very trivial. Like when you tell it w- for what it is, but my dog got bitten by another dog mm-hmm. um, in the park and, it was you know it's all quite standard really shocking obviously yeah. but um because she's she's lovely she loves everybody went up to this other dog and you know just was not expecting this to happen and uh, the kind of ang- anxiety of the whole situation just took me into another place and mm. so that's that's one big thing um i've always thought about um how in that fight or flight m- mode you know you're it's such a different wildly different state to uh you know air commas uh in normal state mm-hmm. um and you see you know time goes differently um you you perceive things really differently yeah. um and so uh, yeah as i say there's some you know different accounts of the situation but differing because they differed to mine it, it just it just did my head in um yeah. and let me to just really think about it and and look at myself and go you know what am, am i wrong is what that's what i mm. 
that's what I experienced. That's so weird. Um, so yeah, I, on a you know, as as I do, I go down rabbit holes of just looking up stuff because I like to just learn about you know as much as I possibly can. And um, I got into thinking about objective reality mm -hmm. because, like in this situation, what what was the truth? What actually happened? If you have varying accounts of what happened, what really did happen? And uh, you know, I'm not. I I love philosophy. I've never studied it, um, but I, I I feel like it it goes into my work. I think it's you know it's just it's fascinating stuff isn't it i love i love yeah. hearing ideas um i just i can't struggle to read read it <laughs> um so i'd much rather get it from other people i think um or like the situation that something when it relates to you, you it gives you the drive doesn't it to to look into mm -hmm. something and understand it a lot more deep deeply um so yeah i think uh i think it was kant um that i got on to um talking about i think that's where the word noumena come up in fact um which is literally the you know a, a thing in its objective state if it if that was a thing mm -hmm. um which, <laughs> which it can't be which you know it's <laughs> oh my god <laughs> time I... myself nuts <laughs> um <laughs> all right i've got another track here for you this also comes from sonora's brand new album noumena and this is just a wonderfully enjoyable track this is called Perceptual Daylight, here on Ambient Discourses.
So, you know, so then it reflects you back to, well, okay, well, then all we're, all we're doing is perceiving, right? Everyone's mm -hmm. perceiving their own version of events, um, which also uh, reminded me of like solipsism, where you kind of think that, well, I'm the only one here, and like, what is <laughs> this is all made up? I'm the only, uh, like, you know, you this is all the all part of a story, or this is all part of my dream, or whatever, and that's yeah. very a very scary thought, and quite it quite is. Next, I think this is uh, this is this is the realm <laughs> of of Alan Watts and Ram Dass and yep. some of those mystics, like this <laughs> this concept that you're playing with that reality and what is our perception and what is actually what is the actual true moment or what's what's the authentic thing that we can latch onto and it's it's all illusion <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, right. it's all illusion <laughs> and it can be really dangerous stuff to to think about you have to definitely keep yourself grounded oh, um, yeah about when looking at this stuff but it's fascinating i love i love it i love thinking about it um but yeah, you have to be careful because it can literally just take the ground from underneath you. And, it sure can. You know, it's like <laughs> it's like that kind of uh, with dichotomy be the word of um, you know that the universe doesn't care about you, and that can be yeah. so beautiful, and it could be so destroy you know destructive. And <laughs> yep. That, um, yeah, your perspective or your view on on those ob objective or relative realities, it's it can be yeah, just like you said, extremely destructive and completely obliterating of the ego, or mm -hmm. <laughs> or or it can be extremely affirming. And I've I've had both of those experiences as I've kind of explored the facet of consciousness and an objective reality. Uh, but lest, lest I hijack <laughs> this conversation about <laughs> deep sure. philosophical stuff, um, sure. as, you're, as you're processing through this, these deep things about this, what is my objective reality or what is, what is the, the thing that I can latch onto? How did that start to translate itself into music for you, into Numina? Um, well, I, obviously the t tapes and, you know, this, this kind of ontology thing of, um, you know, lost or old media or, or nostalgia for times gone past, um, ties in so, so naturally. Um, and so I got, I, at some point I got thinking, you know, this, if a musical idea could be like a memory or, or a perception of, a, of, a, of an event, say, um, and then it gets gets put onto tape and like like as i was explaining earlier about tape loops you know it, it it goes around once and it's kind of it's already altered it goes on another time and especially with some of the tapes that i use because i've i've rescued cassettes from my youth to make some of the tape loops <laughs> they're really degraded um you know just about hanging on and so mm -hmm. a few times round and they're just so wonky and um skewed and and i thought wow this is great this is this is kind of this is playing into my hands so beautifully um, so yeah, that's kind of the concept around how that how it translated to music, I guess. Um, so yeah, I just played with ideas, just putting down what what I it sort of envisioned as this this is that moment or this is this moment or this concept, and then it sort of variously gets degraded through through different mm. different tracks or in different ways in different tracks. Um, yeah, I, th I guess I guess that's it. There wasn't. You know, it didn't sort of enter into motifs or anything like that. It was more, it was very conceptual. Mm. <laughs> um, and I think sometimes it's quite hard to do in in ambient music to to say like I'm writing about this now because um, right. without a uh, you know lyrics, for instance, or you know you've got title at least, but without sort of lyrics or some kind of storyteller, you can you can still be uh, people can infer what they like from it which is great too right. and i think it's important but um what i have found recently um which i didn't realize was important to me and which used to really annoy me is is um putting the context out there with with your work um just like at an art gallery you know you get the little plaque thing and it'll tell you what the hell this abstract thing on the wall is is mm. about and with you know and there's there's, there's con pros and cons to that um but um 
to give to give that context helps you just to i guess it just steers you onto the right path of of the intent at least mm. um because i don't want to you know there's still this this music can go out there and people can find what they like in it I don't, right 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 you know, it's wonderful um but at least that's that was my intent with it that's I've, I've processed the you know the emotions and the thoughts behind it in the way that i naturally make music you know mm-hmm. the the harmonies that come out of me naturally are just that's that i guess yeah <laughs> um yeah so so there's uh I, yeah i guess there's a little bit of well no i don't i don't want to say too much actually <laughs> <It> <laughs> no i i think i think there is um there is some value in like uh, providing a seed if you will uh for the end listener some context around your what you're creating and, and why and what inspired you in the moment um and yet held in tight balance with just at the same time letting them just explore and decide for themselves what it sounds like or what it's about or but i i I do have a fond appreciation though for when an artist um takes that extra little bit of time um whether it's in their press release or in the description on you on youtube or in their album on bandcamp it it gives me a little bit finer appreciation for where they were in their headspace at that time or Mm -hmm. what was the driving force behind it because that that um ephemeral kind of spiritual quality feeds into how you're creating and the from the space and i think that that can help the listener totally key into some of the emotions or some of the experiences and and then of course they're not done there they bring their own history and their own perspectives to that yep, and they yep. mix it all together and it becomes even further degraded metaphorical yep. tape so to speak <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah yeah it keeps going around yeah, yeah love it so yeah. what do you have on um do you have any other projects that um or even collaborations that you are either working on at the moment or looking uh looking ahead to um let's see so i i mean i've i've recently asked a, a select few to um to look at doing some remixes on the on the numina album which is really exciting because i've had really positive reaction to that um so that would take it to the next step of uh, of, of perception or or mm-hmm. in what's the word i'm looking for in in t- interpretation yeah you know, because here's a bunch of sound um and you've got the loose context of it but what's your take on it you know I, i'm really mm-hmm. kind of pushing these these people to to take on yeah just to take it where they feel naturally um that's going to be so interesting to hear um yeah. yeah, some I'd of the watch. ambient remixes have been really interesting where the the artists will just make their stems available and just like, here, go for it. <laughs> Do yep, what you want with. Exactly yeah, yeah. I love it. And again, it's a collaborative thing. And it just, yeah. it's another thing that takes it, uh, you know, and, and yet another step out of my hands. It's, it's that thing I love of, you know, once. <sighs> finishing a project so hard um but <laughs> yes. letting go is is these even harder you know it's like, oh my god it's done like i can't do anything to it now it's, it's done but to to something like this is really helpful because it's, it's sort of cements in your mind that this isn't mine anymore this is out in the world mm. it's just on its own journey you know um literally the stems the the little different tracks the different sounds that are going on are in someone else's hands and they can do what they like with them that's i think that's amazing that's yeah. really exciting that is really exciting. I think that would be. I think that just sounds like a uh, a wonderful a wonderful idea, like concept. Like it would be, it'd be cool to just make the the foundation of an album and maybe not even complete it and just say, all right, here's here's the stem files. I don't care who you are, yes. what you do, <laughs> make something with it, and you know. Yeah. And then 
kind of like the the whole game of telephone. All right, then uh, you I'm... take your stem files and then make it available and then continue to see how that evolves. I think that would be endlessly fascinating to me to see how. <laughs> Uh, like it, it reminds me of, um, and, and it's not in any way the same because. But there's there's an electronic artist, and I, I'm having a hard time recalling his name. He had created this really long album. Um, it was, I think, it was somewhere around like six or eight hours long, really long. That's Aika. Um, yes. The, <laughs> Yes, you yeah. all right. Yes. So for the listener, this is a this is an audio reflection of of the the breakdown that hap- occurs with dementia and oh, it was beautiful and painful and disturbing and it just continued to degrade and evolve over time and become this monstrousness and then dissolving into nothing and yep. it's such a profound album to listen to so it'd be really interesting to i mean so so that's my um closest likening of of what i think that it would be like to just see a single project change hands over numerous times and see what that would evolve or devolve into <laughs> yeah absolutely there's um yeah, there's, there's a couple of, couple of projects like that that come to mind actually. Um, one one was you know, uh, first and more Sonic Youth guitarist did a, did an album called Root in the '90s, I think it was. I think it was like mid '90s where he he just re- literally recorded, I think it was like ten minutes of just noise guitar and just sent that out to various musicians. And the album is is literally their interpretations of or their reworkings or wow. or whatever with that piece of music. And they're all, they're all so different. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, there's also, I'm trying to remember his surname. Um, there's a guy called Mark, oh, Wiedenbaum. I think that's how you say it. Do you know you're aware of this guy? No, I'm not. Oh, he's amazing. Like, um, he, I don't know how it happened upon his writing, but um, he he sends out a regular email and it's, it's largely about experimental and ambient, tends to be ambient sort of music or sound art. Um, and he does an ongoing project uh, called, I think it's, I think it's pronounced Junto. I don't know. I'm terrible with this. You know, when you read words and you have, have a thing mm-hmm. in your mind and you go to say them out loud, and you're like, oh, I don't actually know how to say this word. Yes. Um, but he has an ongoing collaborative, uh, you know, just experimental project. Um, and one, one of those. I th- in fact, I think this is kind of a recurring concept behind it. Is um, you know, one week. Uh, the, there's like a prompt. There's a prompt every week, and, mm. and one week the prompt might be right. Make make a piece of music um, that's 30 seconds long, and in you know in G, and I don't know. Use your dishwasher to make it, and then the <laughs> next week will be um, you know a, a collaborator can take that piece and then build upon it, um, and the third third week again, and they they tend to be yeah three weekly things like that and then just you know it's it's so fascinating because not only can you know just someone collaborate with that piece but many people can collaborate with that piece so you get it's like a a tree branching out you get all these different variations and see the different paths that this idea could take wow it's amazing yeah i've been trying to trying to get involved in them um but you know time permitting stuff like that is i i love it i think again you know it, it, it it stops you from taking taking music too seriously yes. or putting too much weight on it. It's just having fun with with the process, and it's just it's open. It's, you yeah. can do anything. That's in, in a positive that's, way. That, yeah, and that's so <laughs> that's so wonderful. It's like extremely refreshing. You know, I grew up with the model that the 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 trajectory for music composition and whatnot. To the path of as of an artist was write your songs, um, put together a demo, go look for a record label to back you so that you can actually record the full length album, and then go on tour and all that, and the yep. the whole trajectory of music as a commodity. And mm. this 
it's just so what what we're talking about here just is so liberating to me is this idea of you're taking the pressure out of trying to, of having to make money off of this yeah yeah you you're you you're not worried about who's listening you're not worried about how many units you've sold it's all just ephemeral it's all intangible and it's just this it's all about living in that moment and creating and responding to the environment you're in and building those creativity muscles and you your listening muscles and your awareness and consciousness mm -hmm. and i i just find it absolutely liberating and i i just wish <laughs> I just wish this for the rest of the music industry. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's step away from the conversation for just a moment and check out another track by Sonora. This comes from the 2022 release Strays B, and this is entitled Building Lake. Here on Ambient Discourses.
Help me keep Ambient Discourses ad-free. Become a supporter today with your monthly contribution at stolas.com slash support. Supporters get free music downloads delivered right to your email. Become a monthly supporter today at stolas.com slash support. Thank you. I think, um, to, okay. I mean, I, I, for a while I've, I've seen, and I, I'm pretty sure this is, this is across the sort of ambient world that, um, and the, or at least the, the kind of rise in the interest of it at the moment is that it, it's again, such a, such a great positive reaction towards, uh, to the commodity or commoditizing of, of music. Um, it's a, it's a, such a great way to go. You know, everything's getting shorter and shorter and faster and faster, and our attention spans are shrinking. And you know, and you've got to make this music that's so exciting in the first two seconds, or someone doesn't care. Yeah. Um, this is, the, you know, it's the absolute opposite of that, yes. and I love it. It appeals to my, you know, the rebel in my head that yes. goes against stuff. It's like, oh my god, <laughs> make it longer and slower, and just you know, not, <laughs> not horrible. Not, not that you know, once someone, you know, you still want to be able to connect, but just to. Yeah just to be what it is and not have like you say not have to think about how the hell are we going to get this on a on a record at some point <laughs> it doesn't matter you literally now we can we've got Bandcamp. you know we can, yeah. it can be out like the caretaker album i mean that what a piece of work and six six or so hours yeah. and it's just it's incredible i i, I mean just just the whole I- idea of it um not just the concept which is amazing but the idea of having a, a piece of work that long you know and obviously there's yeah. been performance pieces that are you know 24 hours or longer and but to have a i don't know a recorded work like that it's just i i love it again it's it's a very liberating thing just to to realize actually do you know what it doesn't it doesn't matter anymore mm. um and, and and also in the way that you know that by necessity a lot of us are diy musicians now yeah. um which, which i think is just the best way anyway right. um but that's that's so cool because it leads to again collaboration and a really supportive network for which is what we what mm-hmm. we vulnerable musicians need right yes. we need to prep each other up and like you know really support each other and and there's some some really inspiring stuff happening there um again you know i never thought i'd be bigging up instagram but um it's one <laughs> It's one little. I hate social media. I really, really do. I cannot stand it. But, um, and it's, and I still do it in small doses. Just yeah. you know, I, I, I cannot. No. But I'm, I'm so but. with you there. It it doesn't <laughs> take much to end up doom scrolling for an hour and you realize mm. oh my god what am i doing i'm trying to catch myself <laughs> various times of oh, sorry many times now i've i've started to count the amount of adverts and when when it when i'm st- scrolling and, and it's outnumbering the amount of actual posts <laughs> i'm like i'm put the phone away now like this is this is like wasting time it i is. could literally be doing anything better um <laughs> i really like that, your I really like your observation that the that ambient like when you're creating ambient music you're basically like sticking it to the man uh, yep. and the proverbial man here is faster shorter more mm-hmm. intensive and I, I like that just it's there's this almost almost kind of punk rock mm. attitude about it about screw you I'm not going to create a th- two minute 30 second song that <laughs> that's going to grab your attention in three seconds and hang yep. with you for the end yeah but, but um there's there's a parallel there um Robert Rich enlightened me about when I was uh interviewing him he told me about um some of the uh traditions and I'm gonna I'm gonna totally mess this up but like some of the Hindu ragas and uh, chants and um, music related um, community experiences that it's all about community and they all happen at long different periods of time and Mm -hmm. and he was telling me about some ragas actually last an entire weekend so you or whatever so you have these quote unquote performances that are that are lasting days yeah, and in order to even catch one unique part of the performance, you have to be there at three a.m. Yeah. or four a.m. Yeah. or whatever it is. 
Absolutely. And Isn't that incredible? I love it. Yeah, and there's there's this communal community aspect of it of music as a shared experience and um this it just it, I think that's a reflection of what you're talking about uh, mm. this idea of yeah, we're we're in for the long haul. You <laughs> this 64 minute piece, come on, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, how is how long it takes to 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 uh, convey what you need to convey, right? I yeah. mean, I know there's definitely a a craft in in uh, you know, water or distilling rather um mm-hmm. ideas down to present them in a certain way. And I and I love that too, you know, and I do that all the time in my work, but it's yeah, I don't know, this feels more as you said earlier it's a, bit, it's a bit more pure and it's it's soul enriching and i think it goes also for um you know we're not just sticking it to the man for yeah. not not creating music that's <laughs> going to be easily commoditized but we're also for for all of us as listeners of music and um and you know enjoyers as experiencing music we we're taking a break from all that i, I was just trying to hold on to my thought which was the um it, you know, another way that we're sticking it to the man was, is that we, uh, for all of us as listeners, is we, we again, we're not we're not conforming to this this idea of short, sharp bursts of of information or, or music or whatever it is. But we're we're actually all slowing down. We're all taking a minute out of our busy lives and having an experience, right? Um, right. Not to sound too hippie or whatever, but it's like that's what we're doing, and that's what we kind of. I think we're losing a lot of at the moment with uh, with, with with the fast paced world. Um, we all need it as as we you know as we found with the lockdowns that you know <laughs> when we had the the enforced sort of break from this this pace of life. Um, I think a lot of people realised actually, do you know what we, we we are going too fast? Like we're not taking uh, account of what really is happening. It's it's like you know like literally walking down the street and not not taking in surroundings right we're too busy um and yeah. i think a lot of this long form music is is so good for that um you know not not just obviously it's great for meditation for one but also um maybe maybe in a kind of in a subconscious meditation meditative way you know you're mm-hmm. you're just slowing right down and just you know it's essential like I, it's... you just yeah going with that pace yeah it's i think you're right it's something we we definitely need and i think that there are huge mental health benefits to just slowing down altogether and um and reassessing like i think that the the zombie music kind of gives you this space to reassess and to think and to contemplate and to allow your mind to wander and, and I know that makes some people uncomfortable hmm. probably because they're not used to it they're not used to giving themselves space and we're always reacting to everything that's going on around us yes constantly and <laughs> it's just a bombardment of information bombardment like information that doesn't even matter exactly yeah like so much of the and we're and we're sharing too much yeah <laughs> i think <laughs> yeah so much oversharing. oh definitely some parts of that are interesting and, and i'm and i'm glad to experience some of it but yeah as, yeah. A, as a whole you know i think that like there's a, i don't know it's quite an archaic expression to say there's a time and a place but you know i think yeah. there is for some things and there's and there's, there's definitely a, I, I i'm missing the mystery um, behind a lot of stuff, you know, that we 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 give away too much from behind the curtain. Sometimes I think, not just in the creative world, but you know, we're not leaving. I, I can't believe this is the first time I've mentioned David Lynch because I, I tend to mention him all the time. Um, but as he always says, leave, to, to leave room to dream, right? I, yeah. I think we we really need to leave room to dream in things. As I was saying earlier about that short story writer, there's you need to leave space to 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 get involved in whatever it is you're doing not as you say to be just processing or li- literally sometimes it feels like you're batting away information right um like stop selling that to me and what is this product i don't mm-hmm. care i don't know what you- it's going on and you get uh you know uh you get so baffled and so overwhelmed by all this yeah information i guess um that you don't 
I don't know. You just you're not. You're certainly not getting time to process your own stuff. And yeah. as as you said, with, with um, the music and and it is what meditation is really is is sitting down and and facing stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. Not just going. Oh, forget that. I've got time to process that. It's sitting with your with your emotions with your with your life and and letting all that stuff come out of your brain for a minute and yeah and then letting it go exactly yeah yeah because otherwise you're just holding on to it and it's like a poison right you're just holding on to all this these toxins of like oh my god that thing made me angry or this situation needs to resolve or whatever and just take a minute and and as you say you, you let it go after a while and 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 then Oh my God! It's magic. <laughs> it's liberating. This it's is so <laughs> this is why I wish I could just ironically go up to the top of the tallest tallest hill and whisper. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be quiet for a while. Let's yeah. just hush and listen and observe. And it's it's so refreshing. Oh, it really is. There was, I, I think my first uh, encounter, I've been trying for, for many years to find a meditation that works for me. And it's, you know, mm-hmm. I, I know how, I know how good it is. And I, I really struggle with, with different ones and chatting my brain off. Um, but uh, anyway, um, I just you know, a simple your, meditation sorry. thing and in, in its simplicity, it's, it's really profound. And that's just really observing your breath. Mm. You know, just observing the feeling and the sensation of your chest collapsing and expanding. And every time thoughts enter in your mind, you just kind of, you look at the thought, you observe it, and you're like, okay, mm. and then let it go. And then that that's just the process. And that process of observing thought it gives you the space to just learn how to be without having to let your monkey mind run on autopilot. Mm. Yep. You know, or react to that or think how, think about how you're going to react to that. And yeah. which is often from an emotional place, which is not, not a good one. Right. right. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. And, and I, yeah, it's just made me think about the music thing again. The, the you know the, the ideas and letting the ideas go. Um, so I think a, a lot of years, um, at least for me, maybe this is a common thing. I don't know, but when you you're processing ideas or emotions rather, or yeah, emotions through your songwriting or your music making, or whatever. Um, I find sometimes you're you're holding on to that because you're <laughs> you know. Um, Let's say you write a really angry punk song about a thing, and it's and I think that's that's amazing, and there's a re- definitely a place for that. And sometimes it's just like the only thing you can do is just go, yeah. "Oh my god, this thing is wrong, and I'm really angry about it," yeah. and to share that emotion, right? But also, I feel like sometimes there's I see, um, you know, certain bands or musicians that are, are constantly in that place, and I struggle with that. I think perhaps perhaps some people were able to do this a lot better than i am because i definitely cannot do it um i feel like if i was to work uh, to make that kind of music all the time i would just be constantly stressed yeah uh, do you know what i mean like it would keep you in that place mm-hmm. um, i don't really have a point to this i'm just <laughs> thinking about it no it's this is this is good stuff because this is this is the sort of thing that the headspace we get into as creators mm. when we're contemplating and observing things and then we respond with our craft Mm. and if you're constantly in this state of you know (laughs) just when do you stop to listen you have to stop Mm. to listen you can't just scream into the wind with Mm. every single thing you do you have to stop and listen yeah, I, g- I guess that's the thing, isn't it? But you, I'm, I'm forgetting that, of course, it's there's a huge catharsis that comes with it. Um, yeah. That you know, you can go and do this and play a gig and shout literally. I love this shout shout in, into people's faces or into the room for half an hour and in oh my god, and it all comes out. Yeah, and then <laughs> that's when you go, ah, oh, I'm I'm it's gone. It's yeah. oh, the weight's gone. You know, yeah. So yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's good because there's there is some cathartic aspect of it. In fact, um, mm. 
I was, I saw a reel or a short or some from psychologist talking about the therapeutic value of death metal and, <laughs> and yep. screamo and all that stuff. The the aspect of just taking whatever's inside you and infestering and just scream it out, let yep. it out, yep. and let it go. But then you need to walk away and find find that moment, find a quiet space to reflect and yep. to let it go. That's the key, isn't it? Yeah, for yeah. sure. All right, I've got two tracks that I want you to hear, and they bleed into one another, which is why I'm playing them both. So you get a twofer. This comes from Sonora's 2022 release, Stray's Sea, and this is entitled Forgotten Light and Data Haven, here on Ambient Discourses.
one last bit, one last question here, and then and then we'll wrap it up. But okay. what? Uh, first of all, thank you so much for this conversation. I just, <laughs> I'm, I'm just really enjoying this thoroughly, and uh, I feel like I'm talking to a kindred spirit, someone who is a, kind of a similar energy wavelength or something. What I don't know how you describe it, but. Yeah. Last question, though, um, for other musicians out there who are probably starting out for the first time or maybe find themselves at a crossroads and figuring out what to do with their life, with their music, do you have any advice steeped in your own personal experiences that you would like to share with other musicians? Sure. Um, okay, it's an interesting one, and I do take things very literally, um, but... Um, for me, I, 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 I can't not make music. So to envision someone who's at a crossroads with it, I would, I would say, like you, you know, if you need to do it or not, and you make it happen, um, and and then that's easier said than done. So I know we be, might be looking at the advice to 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 go forward with that. Um, so perhaps, and I'm, so I'm just going to think this out loud. Um, so perhaps if you're in two minds, uh, maybe it's not that strong of a draw and there's no reason music can't be, uh, you know, a hobby. And that, that kind of idea makes me sick sometimes because I know because it's such an immense drive for my for me. Um, hmm. But I think, you know, I, I mean, I've, I've had just a few years in my life where I couldn't play music for a while and it was just the darkest time. And then I realized I need to do this. And I think when you're at those sort of crossroad moments, you know, you, you, it's, I guess you just trust your gut. Like, if you know you have to do this, then you will find a way and you just, you just need to find a way however you possibly can. I mean, sometimes in our, in our darkest moments, like you, it doesn't matter how you're doing it. I think you just, just do something creative. I mean, for me, everything is creative. Like I, I love baking bread, bread, baking is such a creative process it is. <laughs> it's amazing it's therapeutic and there's a there's a whole journey to it and there's love in it and it's oh my god it's amazing and or gardening or you know i it, it's sorry i'll try and keep this short i'm going to go off on too many tangents but um it reminds <laughs> talk you about as long <laughs> as you want it's fine. <laughs> it reminds me of how some people say oh i can't draw and and that really bugs me because i think everyone can draw it's just i think the idea is that you can't draw to some imagined standard right yeah. everyone can well okay physically <laughs> if you have the physical means you can hold a, a you know some kind of writing implement and you can make a mark that that is you know that's that's art like to me that's expression that and that's all it's about i think if you're if the question is like where, where do you go if you want to you know make a career out of it or make this a lifelong thing is you just put all of it in you know all of yourself into it you just and again i think i feel like you can't not do that um or, but if you're thinking about how you how you go forward and react uh, sorry uh continue in a horribly oppressive capitalist society that, <laughs> you know it's just against us being creative emotional expressive human beings you know good luck but um we you can do it you know like and again i think it counts for things like how do you make ginger beer all right yeah let's do this and like yeah. um find out it's oh, the, Creativity is in everything. I swear. It re and I, I, I think there's, you know, I haven't got the words, and maybe one, one day later in my life, I'll, I'll realise the words to say this. But I just think it's like it's such a, a crucial part in our existence. It, it really is, and it's, and it's everyone can do it. Everyone has it in them to make art. Um, it just, you know, we can, we just need to abandon the ideas of, of what, you know, a st a st that these standards are in art or, you know, it's not, it's not an elite thing. It, you don't have to be a professional. You don't have to have a career out of it. It's just something we do. We've always done it forever. And uh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't know if that's Absolutely. an answer or not, or just a waffle, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's a hundred percent spot on because I think it's, a recent phenomenon that we've started to treat it as this thing for a vehicle making money mm, or yeah, a vehicle sure. for popularity when uh, for most of history music has been something 
to connect us to the ephemeral divinity of whatever's out there in the universe mm -hmm. and to connect us together as culture and to tell stories and pass on lineage and that sort of thing. So yeah. it's very utilitarian, but on a deeper level, deeper social, spiritual level and very little to do with <laughs> I've got 50,000 Spotify streams <laughs> like oh my god who cares? Yeah. oh it's horrible it really is yeah so it's your advice is beautiful it's profound and I think that it would be a great encouragement for all the artists around us to all right calm down about the stats calm down about the popularity game just put it in the bin back to the it's basics it's, it's, not, it's not relevant at all yeah, it's right. <laughs> i mean so. yeah i mean maybe a quick add-on to that answer is that you know that even if you are looking to make a, a you know a, a, a living to make money out of it as a career you still need to love it you still have to you need to do it you, you still have to have that need to do it or it's not yeah. going to be sustainable yeah. you know you can't just like phone it in you know that's never going to be sustainable if you don't care that much it's not it's not for you i guess but you know when it is and there it is wow another amazing conversation in the bag greg was onto something there and i wish I wish, 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 wish I could have had the rest of the conversation intact. But we are really onto something there about the idea that when you're creating from a space that's deep, it's genuine, it's authentic, it's, it's something that resonates not just with you but with others there's kind of universal truth baked into it when you're creating from that space your music can really transcend limitations and become the universal language between each of us but when you're creating from what i feel is a lesser space it's not invalid by any means but but when you're creating from a space that's motivated to try and make money with your craft or to make a career out of it or or something that's just other than the purity of creating for the sake of creating because it's what we do it's what we are we are creators and if we try to create our art to fulfill something like making money or to earn a living those things are wonderful don't get me wrong but when that becomes the motivator behind what we do i feel that it taints our our art and adds impurities in it that I think the listener can pick up on that. Anyway, well, my thanks to Greg from Sonora um, for the amazing conversation. Um, also to Tim Allen from uh, Perceptual Tapes for the hookup. Uh, definite great relationship there. Thank you, Tim. Uh, you can find more music from Sonora out at Bandcamp at sonora.bandcamp.com. Sonora is spelled S-O-N-A-U-R-A. Thank you, my friends, for tuning in to Ambient Discourses, conversations with musicians and composers who create musical experiences and sonic landscapes. Until next time, keep creating.